Welcome to Macau for the 26th Motorcycle Grand Prix to be held on this tiny Portuguese colony, where visitors are always made welcome, and the phrase, we never close, could really have been invented for. New boys and old hands have been battling for the best grip positions, and it's one of the debutants, Carl Fogarty, who blitzed a pole with a sub 2 minute 34 second lap. Fellow Yamaha man, James Whittam, lines up next to him. Uh, it's not exactly my favourite circuit, but I'm just starting to enjoy it now, just getting the, getting, the, getting the circuit flowing and that, and starting to go fast. Before I was like trying to ward, it felt like I was going fast, but I wasn't now, I've smoothed down a bit. I've gone fast and without, without, without even noticing, you know. War of the Roses, which one's going to win, the white or the red? I honestly wouldn't like to say. I probably Carl's got a, maybe a little bit of a, oh, an advantage on paper at this stage, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't like to. I bet, I'd say we're fairly even. The riders under orders then for the start of the first leg of the 1992 Macau Motorcycle Grand Prix. The green flag waved at the back. Everybody's on position. They're ready. All eyes on the traffic lights. They stare at the lights, they change from red to green, the charge is on, who is going to make the break? And it's, well, the charge through the first corner, Peter Abato, well up at the start, a ferociously fierce start, the charge is on, there's Fogarty in third place, Peter Abato ahead of him, but ooh, who is that mysterious figure out in front? And that's Honda, the Japanese riders made the break, and this is the tricky one, a very, very tight, almost right-handed corner that narrows up there's Fogarty, well he's dropped down a couple of places and Fogarty, well he'll want to be careful on the opening laps, there's an awful long way to go, 15 laps ahead of the field, this is a 3.8 mile circuit and Jamie Whittam now, and there's Fogarty going past Peter Abato, so uh, Whittam goes up into second place, I think Honma still holds the lead, Whittam in second place, Jamie Whittam, then Fogarty on the camera bike in third spot, Peter Abato pushed back to fourth place and uh, this is part of this uh, awesome Macau circuit it really takes a very special sort of rider to go quickly here and uh, Toshihiko Honma well he's a very special rider holding off Jamie Whittam which has been here several times before and Peter Abato back in fourth place there's the leaders then that's Hanma, the Japanese rider number 33 behind him number 69 uh, Jamie Whittam just putting the pressure on and uh, there's Whittam winding up the wick. Honma holds him off. And Carl Fogarty now closing on the front uh, two runners. So we've got 500 Yamahas in first, second, and third place. Behind them still, I think, Peter Abato, the 37-year-old German on the uh, 750 OW01 uh, four-stroke Yamaha. And Whittam goes wide. Fogarty, in practice, overshot this hairpin. Had to do a three-point turn, and for motorcycles, of course, without a reverse gear, that becomes a little bit tricky. Down the hill they go, a downhill run, just brushing against the barriers, coming round towards completing the final lap. We can look out to the window, seeing Dave Woolham's just going out of the pits, a bit of problems for him. Now, we'll see the pace of the Yamahas here. Honma out in front, just trying to hold off Jamie Whittam. And that's the view of the leaders, as seen by Carl Fogarty on the... Uh, machine with a camera bike and they're pulling away from him slightly and Whittam is going to go past is he no has to pull him behind I think it's still Honma out in front we'll see in just a moment it looks like the blue leathers of Whittam still in second spot and this is the fastest part of the circuit they wind the wick up out of the slipstream Honma still there out in front Whittam can't get past Fogarty just hovering shadowing there in third place then going up uh, into uh, fourth spot, that's uh, Chuck Graves, the American. Well, what a great start for Chuck Graves. And Whittam finally does it on the break, going into uh, Lisboa corner, the 90-degree right-hander, just brushing against that arm co. Then uh, they go another right-hander into San Francisco Hill. Up the hill they go, the climb. And uh, then we get to the very tricky, narrowest part of the circuit. And Hummer hanging on to the heels 
of Jamie Whitham on this, the second lap. So at the end of lap one, it was Hunmar out in front. Whitham in second place. They've reversed those positions, though, as they go out onto lap two. Fogarty was third. Chuck Gray's fourth. Philip McCallan, fifth. Eddie Laycock, sixth. Michael Barnes, seventh. Uh, Nick Jeffries, eighth. Carl Truxess uh, in ninth spot. And Peter DeBarto in tenth place, just ahead of Fritz Kling, the American first-timer, with the Belgian Michel Simeon in twelfth place. So, Jamie Whitham, the Yorkshire lad. He's been here a few times. Not had a lot of success. He's had uh, problems with the motorcycles every time he's been there. There's the smiling face of Jamie Whitham, Yorkshire lad from Huddersfield. He's been uh, looked after and cared for by Mick Grant, a uh, very experienced and capable fellow Yorkshireman. And uh, Jamie just popping the front wheel in the air. There's Fogarty in pursuit. The front two... Uh, not exactly pulling away, but I'm sure uh, Carl would like to be just uh, a tad uh, closer. Fogarty from Lancashire. And uh, Jamie Whittam. Ooh. And uh, Hanmar, who was just a bit late on the race, almost T-boning Whittam. Fogarty now uh, winding up the wick. You can see him starting to hurry. Secret here at Macau, though, is to try to be smooth, to try and link these difficult corners together. 24 riders out on the racetrack. That's this lap, of course, to Hanmar, who led on the opening lap at 2.47.35. In practice, uh, Fogarty, 2.33.95. Unofficially, of course, a lap record. Hanmar, number 33, Japanese rider. 27 years of age. 25 years of age, in fact, uh, Hanmar. Started racing back in 1983, that's quite a time ago. His bike, a semi-factory Yamaha. The man who uh, is, manages him, Hiroyuki Kawasaki, Raced several times in England, a uh, good Grand Prix runner. Fourth in the 500 World Championship. Dave Woolhams, who was late out, there he is, uh, back in the pits. Uh, end of the race for him, it would seem. Bad luck for him. Dave Woolhams, a regular here at Macau. Now, can uh, Hanmar uh, do exactly the same thing to Whittam as Whittam did to him? And, him? and the answer is no. Whittam hangs on. It's Hanmar in second place. Fogarty third. McCallum now up into fourth spot. Laycock in fifth position, Chuck Graves is sixth, Michael Barnes seventh, Carl Trucks has eighth, Tony Jeffries ninth, Fritz Kling up into tenth place, that's an excellent ride from him, Michel Simeon, the Belgian eleventh, and Johnny Rave from uh, Northern Ireland, the Ulsterman in twelfth place, Peter Roberto dropping back, oh, now Fogarty closing on the leading duo, Fogarty here for the first time, Fogarty has been here uh, several times before, uh, Moitam has been here several times before, I should say, Fogarty for the first time. And uh, it's no surprise that uh, Fogarty, at least for the first few laps, will follow these men. He was ultra quick in practice. Here's the confirmation of the top six at the end of that second lap. But Fogarty, I'm sure, will just uh, watch this pair. Ah, Peter Abato, the uh, very talented West German, out of this race, though. Here's the bunch further down the field. Number two, Mike Barnes, we saw him. Number five, Derek Young. That's the uh, brother of uh, Honda UK man, uh, Graham Young, the team manager here. And who's this battle? Chuck Graves, just ahead of Fritz Kling. So the two Americans are together, and that means that Fritz Kling is climbing up the leaderboard. He is indeed watching the battle for sixth and seventh place, and that really is marvellous stuff from the two Americans. Good to see them going well. Fritz Kling, uh, 25 years of age, from East Lansing in uh, Michigan, USA. Very close neighbour of Jay Springsteen, the dirt track rider. But look at this, out in front, the front three men together. This really is looking good. Fastest lap now to Fogarty, who closed the gap. Oh, and a faller. Now, that I think is one of the Americans. That could be Fritz Kling himself. Let's just uh, check on that. And that is Kling, I'm sure. He's a big man, he'll pick that up himself. And that really set, oh! And uh, he's obviously just uh, clipped the straw bale, and the straw bale right in the middle of the circuit. And eventually, one of the brave marshals comes to move that. Well, it's a good job he did. Gets it down to the way, but sad luck for Fritz Kling, running in seventh place. And, uh, well, he's going to have to do well to climb back uh, into contention. But he's going well. First time here, a bit of a sad mistake. Now, here's Hanmar winding up the wick going into Jakob Ben. This is the fastest part of the circuit. The Yamaha 
of Carl Fogarty clocked at 138 miles an hour here in practice. Humbar pulls out of the slipstream and does the slingshot on Whitten, but Whitten tries to regain the place and cannot do so, has to pull back into line of stern. So Hanmar takes the lead on the fifth lap. Hanmar goes back in front at the, uh, coming up to the one third distance in this uh, first leg of the two part Macau Grand Prix. And uh, Fritz Kling there, well, I'm not sure that he's hurt. I think he's a little bit cheesed off. I think, uh, I think he's okay. I think he's just uh, unhappy. Whittam on the inside. And the Yorkshire lad decides, no, not this time. Chin on the tank, a bit of a sprint with these lightweight, powerful, four-cylinder, two-stroke Yamahas into the very, very fast reservoir. And then they're on the start and finish straight. Head down, past the pits. They'll be looking at the pit boards for signals. Whitten pulls out of the slipstream, so too does Fogarty. Oh, that's not a good place to be overtaken, but Whitten does it. Whitten goes ahead. Jamie Whitten, chin on the tank. They're so, so quick round that yacht club corner. And there they come, three abreast, though no, it's two abreast, Whittam and Hon Ma disputing it, and Jamie Whittam very quick into Lisboa corner, very easy to uh, make a mistake there and have to take the slip road, and the bike's just twitching and sliding, and these men just ignoring it, pretending it doesn't happen. Fogarty, just losing a little bit of ground, just two or three machines length, but, but he'll be able to pull that back. Now... Here comes the chasing bunch. McCallan is fourth, Laycock is fifth. And then Michael Barnes, Johnny Ray, climbing up there a little bit. Quite a good battle there. Carl Truxess with the green leathers to the right of your picture there. The Austrian, first time here. Here comes number seven, Nick Jeffries. And, uh, well, Johnny Ray getting uh, ahead of that uh, group. Johnny Ray, uh, uh, like most Ulster men, uh, a man who goes well on uh, road circuits, they're, they're, it's, they serve their apprenticeship, diving between brick walls and lampposts. Carl Truxess going well there. So that's Johnny Ray, number 10, now ahead of number 7, Nick Jeffries. Truxess is there. He's uh, down in ninth place or 10th place. Underneath the bridge they go, Hanmar winds up the wick, and Hanmar goes to the front. And Fogarty still shadows them. And... Uh, Hanmar now being shadowed by Whittam. Will he pull out of the slipstream? Whittam is the rider just ahead. And he thought about it. But hard on the brake. Hanmar's good on the brake. Just a little shrimp of a character, but he, uh, he can ride a motorcycle very well indeed. Hiroyuki Kawasaki, the man who uh, manages him before that, uh, had Fujiwara. Fujiwara apparently now uh, a full factory Honda rider. And I suspect that Kawasaki is quite pleased about that because he was a fairly inexpensive rider to... Uh, to live with did have a habit of falling off you may remember a few years ago he having a go with mr haslam till he tipped off here and we're watching the battle between eddie laycock number 11 and philip mccallan number nine so it's a uh, southern ireland era versus northern ireland here and uh well let as you can see less than half a second the gap they're battling for fourth and fifth philip mccallan saying that uh, There'd be uh, uh, an A battle and a B battle. Well, uh, he thought the B battle would between, be between himself and some other four-stroke 750s. But Eddie Laycock on his 500 Yamaha, the Joe Miller bike, just having problems with handling all weekend, not getting the handling sorted out, and he cannot shake off the big, heavier four-stroke, the more sluggish machine. And, in fact, uh, an elderly motorcycle now in terms of uh, modern-day engineering. And uh, Fogarty closer as we rejoin the leaders a good battle for the lead the top three men this is the seventh lap coming up to the halfway stage of this 15 lapper Honma Whittam goes wide he'll try and cut back on the inside with he would oh! well he was going to cut back on the inside unfortunately uh, there was a rear wheel in his way which made uh, that little attempt rather more difficult than uh, he intended it to be the charge is on these Yamahas beautifully engineered by Harris Performance Products in England and uh, making Grand Prix racing affordable side by side and Whittam's done him. Whittam goes back into the lead, Honma in second place and Carl Fogarty who looks very, very relaxed. I think if I were a betting man, I'd probably be putting a bob or two now on Carl Fogarty. He does look very comfortable and whereas Honma and uh, Whittam are... Uh, 
trying hard that you see on this on my, on my camera oh there goes Humbug very quick Oof. and you saw Whitam let off the brake then when he sent that Hanmar was coming along and I think Fogarty might have them both here no he doesn't he stays back there Hanmar down the middle of the uh, road thinking about an inside line Fogarty still hovering as they go into Lisboa corner for this the eighth time out of 15 oh and the bikes just hopping and skipping around on the bumps there and they're, they're just not being phased out at all here comes the battle for fourth and fifth Laycock still holding off Philip McCallan McCallan just dropping back a little bit it was half a second before that gap uh, 1.57 seconds now and uh, Eddie Laycock who was a runner up overall last year uh, not uh, going so well on the uh, Miller Racing machine and this unbike camera does give you exactly what it is like to be riding on that black ribbon of road between two walls there is absolutely no runoff area for a good 80% of this race racetrack sorry make that 90% of this racetrack the circuit uh, 3.8 miles in length 6.2 kilometers if you prefer that and here they go Homma goes back into the lead and Jamie Whitham will once again have seen how quick the uh, bike of the Japanese rider is a semi-factory Yamaha now what's Fogarty gonna do he's still content to follow still got a lot of time we've just done two-thirds distance five more laps to go they all close together the elastic just uh, goes shrinks again and then it starts to expand as they wind the whip to go up San Francisco Hill this is not a place where you want to fall off Hanmar with the advantage but for how long with them breathing down his neck Carl Fogarty in third place putting the pressure on and Fogarty does look relaxed the two men ahead of him are what we would call scratching and Carl Fogarty I think he's touring he's not exactly going down the road to post a letter but he's looking much, much more comfortable than the two men are working hard ahead of him. Honmar leads with them in second place. Eddie Laycock now uh, over seven seconds ahead of Philip McCallan. So uh, 500 Yamahas first, second, third and fourth. Then the 750 Honda, the Honda UK machine of Philip McCallan. And then the 750 Kawasaki of Carl Truxess, the Austrian making his debut here. Fogarty too here for the first time. Oh, and Fogarty just winds up the wick, squeezes the power on, and he goes second. So Fogarty makes his move up into second place. And James Whittam will not be wildly excited about that. And uh, do not be surprised if we see a blue leather, leather clad figure go flicking past at some stage in the very near future. There's the hairpin, Woof, it goes on forever, doesn't it? And down the hill, just brushing against these barriers. And when I say brushing, I literally mean brushing because these men have actually, some of them have made contact uh, this week. Nick Jeffries bounced off one wall. There's Whitam there, look, breathing down the neck of Fogarty. Fogarty looks back, winds up the wick. He's, uh, he's got this job, I would think, under control. Carl Fogarty looks very, very relaxed. He's starting to look round, looking where the opposition is. And he's proved that he knows a point where he can squirt it past uh, Whittam. Now, will he show us? And will he show Honmar? Well, I think he's about to. The pace of the Fogarty Yamaha takes him into the lead. Chin on the tank, side by side. It's the Yacht Club Band. Oh, dear. This is scary. Fogarty on the inside. They're closing on a slower man. As they go turn down to Lisboa, all three men sense the chance to grab the lead. Who's it going to be? Fogarty with the advantage. With him on the inside. Honmar drops back. The two British boys go to the front. And the man there is Frank Stadler, the German, who has just chopped off Honmar. Oh, dear, dear, dear. There'll be a few karate blows back in the paddock after that, I think. So, the Brits are in front, and poor old Toshihiko Hanma, who'd been working so hard, just loses the toe. And those few yards, well, he's made some of them back in. Now, Fogarty here for the first time. What has he learned from uh, the lesser mortals? We're watching some of uh, the rest of the pack go through. There's Philip McCallum, number nine, the Ulsterman. 
he's had some great rides here. There you saw Laycock, and we jumped almost to uh, Lisboa Bend, so that's an enormous lead now. In fact, it's nine seconds the gap between Laycock and Philip McCallum. Philip uh, deciding that uh, finishing is the name of the game. He can't stay with the 500 Yamaha of uh, Eddie Laycock. And suddenly Jamie Whitham is putting the pressure on Carl Fogarty. Pulls out of the slipstream. stream. Is Whitham going to take the lead? as they go on to lap 14 he has two laps to go they've done 13 Whitham takes the lead and it's so oh and Whitham goes down it was I was saying so easy to misjudge the pace and that corner so easy to judge the pace Whitham goes down he's perfectly okay but those that uh, straw bales the uh, trackside barrier right in the path and uh, the yellow flags are out of course oh and uh, in fact there was uh, the race leader, Carl Fogarty, inches away from a crash. Well, Jamie Whitham took the lead, he timed it perfectly, but it meant that he had to go into Lisboa just a fraction too fast. And, uh, well, Jamie Whitham, perfectly okay. I'm delighted to say that, but that could have been nasty. Here we see it again, a rerun. There's Fogarty, ahead of him is Whitham, who's just going in, and he's just probably six inches, and he almost makes it hits the wall very close to being whacked by uh, Carl Fogarty that's close and here comes Honmar and the Whitham rolling towards him with the impact and Honmar well a nice piece of riding but certainly by Honmar he, he actually you can see the black line where uh, he goes round to Jamie Whitham and uh, well it's so easy to make a mistake here Carl Fogarty can now afford to cruise he shouldn't throw uh, victory away here in the opening leg and his first visit to Macau Grand to the Macau Grand Prix and uh, if uh, Fogarty can grab overall victory then I suspect he and Mick Grant and Whitham will be down at uh, Al Orcha the probably the nicest restaurant here in Macau which is a, a favorite watering hole for the Grant squad tonight celebration time but first, Fogarty has got to complete this job, and then he's got to win the second leg, and uh, then he will have made sure of overall victory. Philip McCallum then now moves up into fourth spot. Well, maybe not. Uh, in fact, Whitham is still going. Whitham has gone past. He's remounted. So let me... Uh, I did say he was out, but he's back on the racetrack. So that suddenly uh, puts the pressure on everyone else Jamie Whitham uh, let me just confirm that yes he is Whitham out on the racetrack he has remounted he is uh, 29 seconds behind the leader well it would need something of a miracle for him to beat uh, Fogarty by more than that in the second leg but it's been done before the racing game it ain't over till it's over Fogarty out in front cruising then to a debut victory here at Macau. Oh, and he looked back something there. The back end, and wouldn't that have been just dramatic? You see, it's so easy to lose concentration. Fogarty then sprinting towards the checkered flag. Victory his, a debut victory for Carl Fogarty. Over the line, the checkered flag goes out. Carl Fogarty, the lad from Blackburn in Lancashire, the reigning endurance world champion, has won the first leg of the 1992 Macau Grand Prix. In second place, still waiting, there he goes, Toshihiko Honma, who just eased it all off on the last lap. Number six, Kevin Lee, he's been lapped, but he's uh, taking the checkered flag. Honma, over ten and a half uh, seconds behind, and Fogarty acknowledging uh, the cheers, the applause of the crowd. Now, uh, who's going to go through behind there's Jamie Whitham and so Whitham has finished uh, 34 seconds in there and behind uh, Carl Fogarty so Whitham takes third place despite that uh, spectacular and uh, rather miraculous let off uh, when he clipped the wall at Hotel Lisboa confirmation of the results on your screen that's it the first leg of the Macau Grand Prix. More action to come soon.
now just uh, trying to warm up their tyres finally before the blast off through Yoxa Bend and then the long straight down towards uh, Lisboa Corner brutal 90 degree corner that narrows up uh, difficult for the bike and, uh, fairly horrendous for the cars who uh, also make up per this splendid week's entertainment here at Macau. So that's how they're going to line up Fogarty. Then uh, uh, it'll be Honmer next to him, in fact, uh, because uh, they're lining up as they finish in the uh, first Grand Prix race. So Fogarty, Honmar, Whittam, Laycock and McCallum. That's the order as they'll line up. They won't line up as they practice. The pace car is back, and uh, a problem for a couple of riders already. They're pulling uh, off the track. The green flag is being waved at the back there. Under starter's orders, all eyes on the traffic lights. The lights change to green. The charge is on now. Who is it going to be who makes the front this time? Hunman, number 33 again. Then it's Jamie Whitham in second place. Hunman, the Japanese rider who was second home in the opening leg. There's Fogarty in about fifth or sixth place. The charge is on down towards Lisboa and Fogarty making up ground but he'll probably go into the first corner in fourth place. McCallan just ahead of him. So it's Honmar, Whittam, McCallan and then Carl Fogarty. First, second, third and fourth up San Francisco Hill. They go. Fogarty content to be in fourth place looking for the inside line using the pace of the 500 Yamaha but McCallan just goes across his bowels. Well, and uh, Fogarty finally easing his way past McCallan. Eddie Laycock there, spotted number 11, well down. So it's Hummar and Jamie Whittam, and about to be joined by the first race winner, Carl Fogarty. And Fogarty, that's the on-bike camera on the uh, 500 Yamaha four-cylinder two-stroke, part of the new Mick Grant team. Carl Fogarty and Jamie Whittam, what a powerful combination that's going to be Jean-Michel Mattioli the Frenchman well it, he's really cheesed off he didn't even make the start Fogarty closing on Honmar and uh, Whittam then it's Philip McCallan behind in fourth place as they come to end the opening lap Whittam winds up the wick on the inside of Reservoir Honmar just snatches back the advantage Honmar then leads as they go through at the end of the first lap Whittam in second place Carl Fogarty in third spot and the blast past the pits. Hanmar, Whittam, Fogarty, first, second and third. Then the roar of the four strokes. McCallan in fourth place. And uh, Whittam looking to go ahead. And Whittam goes through to grab the lead at Lisboa. He'll be a bit more cautious this time. Giving himself a fair bit more room. And McCallan losing a place there on that lap. Slipping back to fifth place. And uh, McCallan dropping back a place. Don't know yet who has gone up into... Uh, oh, and Fogarty nearly legging himself off, taking a very tight line through that uh, S-bend section. This is the twisty part of the circuit on the hill high above the paddock area. Whittam, Hanmar, Fogarty, the order. And Fogarty, winner of the first race, growing in confidence. He was prepared to wait behind Mrs. Whittam and Hanmar on the first leg. He's now, even though this is his first year at Macau, I'm sure beginning to feel as if he knows his way around. And uh, the bike popped up. Oh, that's Christian Gardner again. So it really has been a very sad race meeting for him. Number eight, that's uh, the German Peter Abato on the Lark Yamaha. 41, Danny Roberts on the 900 Honda. The 30-year-old uh, from Florida. So two laps gone. Whittam, Hummer, Fogarty, Chuck Graves, Philip McCallan, Michel Simeon, six. Derek Young, Johnny Ray, Carl Truxess back in ninth place at the moment. Michael Barnes. 10th, Eddie Laycock, a very disappointing 11th. 
and this is the end of the third lap of this 15 lap race the front three men still together i think they're going to stay together until the checkered flag again unless we have any disaster with them just not letting oh and hanmar just not to only overtakes him but goes in front of him that was really remarkable stuff from Toshihiko Hanma. He's a brave old character, just 25 years of age. And for a Japanese rider, he really is very smooth indeed. But Whittam outbreaks him beautifully. And uh, well, if Hanma's overtaking move uh, was audacious, uh, that was very skillful by Jamie Whittam, totally unscathed and unperturbed by his little incident, well, his major incident in the first leg when he just uh, touched the arm co just went in a little bit too quick and we're watching Fogarty as, it, as the action seems to him a rider's eye view in third place of Carl Fogarty the on bike camera 235.46 and that's just slightly slower than the lap record Fogarty set on lap 12 in their first outing today Here's the back gap battle behind. Chuck Graves going well. Philip McCallan. Uh, then uh, Derek Young, uh, the Ulsterman, who's getting better and better. Derek Young, the brother of Honda UK uh, man in charge here. Graham Young, himself a former Grand Prix rider, racing runs on the Young family. But what a great ride from Chuck Graves. Having a splendid run out. Chuck Graves is fourth. Philip McCallan, then Derek Young. Michel Simeon up there in that group. So too is Carl Truxess. The Austrian, keep an eye open for the uh, green leathers. There he is at the tail end of that battle. Eddie Laycock beginning to make up ground a little bit. He made a very sluggish start. Chuck Graves from McCallum, then Derek Young, then Laycock. Behind Laycock is number 13, Michel Simeon, then number 99 is Carl Truxess. Behind uh, Truxess is number 10, Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray on uh, the second of the Miller Racing bikes. And back with the leaders. And they're together. A carter-sized blanket could cover this bunch. They are together. Whittam setting the pace. And, uh, well, you're a special human being when you can have a nasty incident like the tumble he took in the first leg and then just bounce back, ignore it, shrug it off, pretend it never happened and go as quickly as you did before or maybe even quicker. McCallan, number nine in fourth place. Philip McCallan who was, uh, had some good rides, third overall last year in 1991, sixth overall the year before, runner-up to Robert Dunlop in 1989. So for the past three years, McCallan has been a key figure in making his mark again in 1992. Eddie Laycock on the 500 Yamaha behind. Carl Truxess getting quicker and quicker on the uh, 750 Kawasaki. Overall, it's Fogarty, Huntmar, Whittam, Laycock, McCallan, Truxess. But I think Truxess uh, is still in with a chance of uh, doing even better than that. He's, what has he got? Well, he's about a minute behind McCallan on total time, so we need a bit of a miracle. There's McCallan. He's good on road circuit. Had a great year this year, despite some injuries. Andy Laycock behind him, Carl Truxess. The Austrian, McCullen into Reservoir at the end of lap seven, still in fourth place, but being pursued and harried by Eddie Laycock and Carl Truxess. And Laycock, you can see the pace of the 500 Yamaha. Laycock making up for a bad start. Truxess trying to hang on. This is a good race. Laycock pulls out of the slipstream, winds up the wick of the 500 two-stroke four cylinder the Yamaha on the inside of McCallum. McCallum will not give way. Down through the gearbox he goes. You can see his hand just flipping the throttle as it changes down the gearbox. And there's Carl Truxess shadowing the pair now. Behind Truxess was uh, Chuck Graves. Young is next. Michel Simeon, then Johnny Ray. Seven laps completed. Eight laps to go. It's almost half distance. <laughs> Fogarty closes up on Hanmar. Will Fogarty leave it to the last lap? Will he make his move early? And they're going through these tricky sections 
and there is no room for error. The clock is running for Fogarty. His best lap, 2.34.76 in this one. The lap record to him in the first race, 2.34.21. Hummer on the bit of the track that Fogarty wanted. They have slowed him down just a couple of a tenth of a second. Fogarty, winner of race one, overall leader at the moment. Hunmar, who is in second place in this race, is in second place overall. Witham, who finished third in the first leg, who leads this race, is third on total time. Then Laycock is fourth, McCallan fifth, Chuck Sess sixth, Johnny Ray seventh, Derek Young eighth, Michel Simeon ninth, and Michael Barnes in tenth place on total time. 2.06. The clock continues to run for Carl Fogarty. They're closing on a slower rider. Round uh, reserv uh, into Reservoir. Round our bend into Reservoir. And uh, Carl Fogarty having to uh, debate which side of that slow man to go and look at the deck of the gap. And here goes Hanmar. Well, that time he did it. So Hanmar at the end of lap 11 takes the lead. Fogarty was held up a bit. Now here comes Whitham out of the slipstream on the inside. He's got the better line and he goes ahead of Hanmar, just cheekily pushes him over. And then oh, Whitham, he, oh, it all came rushing back to him and he hung off the side of the bike, hoping desperately to stay clear of that wall. But he's regained the lead and Hanmar has perhaps shown his hand just a little bit too early. Whitton will, will be ready for that next time. Whether he can do anything about it is another matter, but he will be ready. And Fogarty, Fogarty looking a little bit more ragged in this second race than he was in the first. Perhaps that's not surprising, they are so quick. And Fogarty again closes on the rear wheel of Toshihiko Honma, the 25-year-old Japanese rider, who at present is in second place on the track and second place overall. And uh, Whitham, really, the best he can hope for is the consolation of a race win here. There's no way he can beat either Fogarty or Hanmar to overall victory. Truxess up into fourth place. That is a remarkable ride from the Austrian. And... Uh, Well, look at this. What a superb race. Superb pictures. Just see how much these guys hang off the motorcycle. The knee just skimming the tarmac. The plastic knee pads being used almost as a third wheel as they hurtle around these corners. They are on lap 12. The full countdown is on to the chequered flag. And these three still together. So it was after 11 laps, but it's Whitham who took the lead back just after they went over the line. Whitham who leads now. Hamma looking to use the pace of his apparently quicker Yamaha. And Fogarty, well, he's not really in contention at the moment. He's there in third place. They're pulling away from him. And here comes Hanma, a man on a mission. He winds up the pace of the Yamaha. Then he chases with him and he pulls out of the slipstream again. And once again, Hanma, that bike is quick. And that's a warning to Whitham and to Fogarty. Now, Jamie Whitham gets behind. Hanma stays in the slipstream. Hanma tries to shake him off. Whitham once again goes for the inside line. And again, he tries to go the, across the bowels of the Japanese rider. And once again, Jamie, Jamie Whitham regains the lead. It's an action replay. Deja vu. We've seen it before. And what, oh, Jamie Whitham's bike shaking in protest as they go over the hill. Well, Hanmar's bike is quick, and uh, Jamie Whitham knows this. He's going to have to do something very, very special. And uh, you somehow feel, in the first race, you had the feeling that Fogarty could win it. Somehow, and maybe I'm wrong, somehow I feel that Fogarty, he, maybe he can win, maybe he feels he doesn't have to. And of course he doesn't have to. He has to finish close enough to Hanma. In the first race, the gap was 10.66 seconds. 
Fogarty leads at the moment by 9.5 seconds. Oh, almost in formation flying. The three Yamahas, the front wheels popped in the air. Synchronised downhill racing. Eat your arse out, you skiers. With them. Humma. And again, the front wheels just, just pour the air as these high-powered, lightweight, two-stroke racing machines cost £75,000 each a race, and they cost a bob or two to run at every meeting as well. And the clock running this time on Hanma, who has a fastest lap in this race of 2.34.46. Fastest lap so far in the meeting to Fogarty, 2.34.21. Hanma in second place. Now, the little Japanese rider starts to wind himself up for the attack. It's a very simple technique. He will just charge, he will try to get the drive out of the very last corner. They're round our bend. They go into reservoir. Hanma tries to be very, very quick here. Watch him. Very quick driving out. Whitam stays over and that makes life a little bit more difficult for Hanma. Hanma looks for a gap and he goes through again. Well, Whitam was ready for him. He knew what Hanma wanted to do. Hanma wanted to drive through on the inside. Whitam made it difficult and Hanma just simply went on the other side. 234.51. And 234.41 and Whitam once again. Oh, and he's so quick. Is he too quick? Oh, dear. Dear, dear, dear. Your heart goes right into your mouth every time these superheroes, these superstars of motorcycle racing go hurtling into Lisboa Bend. We are on lap 14. There is less than two laps to go. You pay your money, you take your choice. Is it going to be 69 Whitten who wins? Is it going to be 33, Hanma the Japanese star? Is it going to be number one? the endurance world champion, Carl Fogarty, teammate to Jamie Whitham, who is going to repeat his victory of the first race. It really is special stuff. This is perhaps one of the best Macau Grand Prix that I've ever seen, and I've seen some good ones. Three men together, and again the front wheels just pour into the air, just pop off the ground as they wheelie their way on that downhill run. Whitam, Hanma, Fogarty, you say their names as quick as they go past. Whitam looks over his shoulder, they're still there. He can't shake them off. Fogarty closer than ever. He's ready to pounce. This is lap 14. Little more than a lap and a third to go. Less than a lap and a half into the Malco hairpin. Whitam, fastest lap to Fogarty on that last lap, a new lap record, 2.33.94, the first sub-34 minute lap ever on a motorcycle round this 3.8 mile circuit. The record was shattered in practice, it's been broken in both the first race and the second race by Fogarty, and Fogarty is looking threatening. Now what can Whitam do now? He's tried to block Hanmar on one side, he's tried to block him on the other. And the simple fact of the matter is that Hanmar's bike is very, very fast. Here he comes again, the Japanese rider. He winds up the wick, number 33. He blasts his way past, he takes the lead going into the final lap. Now surely he knows what Whitam will do now. He'll be ready for Whitam. It's now or never. The charge is on. Hanmar tries to shake Whitam out of the slipstream and Whitam is close enough to do it. At Lisboa, he'll have to find another place. Honma leads going into Lisboa. Oh, and Whitam this time goes too fast again. It was almost an action replay of the crash. And Jamie Whitam is off. And Honma, Honma could win this one. Now, in the first race, let's remind ourselves, he finished 10.66 seconds behind Fogarty. He's got to beat Fogarty by more than that distance. And he is a man on a mission. Whitam is second. Fogarty is third, but 10.66 seconds is a long way. They're probably four or five seconds apart now. Now, 
Is Hanma going to do it? What a marvellous victory it would be for Toshihiko Hanma. He's charging. He's got it all wound up. And Whittam is in second place. And at the moment, Fogarty's making no attempt to get past whether he can or not. 10.6 sec seconds is the buffer. And Hanma is just riding on and over the limit. Fogarty and they're reeling him back in they're reeling him back in Whittam and Fogarty now who's going to win? it is anybody's race and Hanmar's brave, brave attempt to break clear and to stretch that gap has failed Hanmar charging and he's proved a very, very formidable opponent to these two Team Mick Grant competitors Whittam is second in this race he's third overall Hanmar leads but he's second overall and Fogarty, who's in third place in this second leg, is heading for overall victory with a win and a third. Hanma, now Whittam closing, but we've seen how quick Hanma's bike is. Round the fisherman. And uh, we've got uh, one of the uh, slow men in the way, Oxenreiter, the uh, German rider. He, is he going to get in the way? Oh, he is! He went wide and... Uh, Oh dear, 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 all over the track and the German has made life difficult for Jamie Whittam and Whittam I'm sure can't get back. It's going to be a win, a very satisfactory win for Toshihiko Hanma. Whittam will take second place, some consolation, but what a great ride from Hanma. He's pleased. Whittam is second, Carl Fogarty cruises home in third place. Well, Hanma then the winner of the second leg. Jamie Whittam second, half a second down. Carl Fogarty third, 2.2 seconds down on the winner. Carl Truxess a splendid fourth, the Austrian on the Kawasaki. Well, what a great day. Let me confirm the overall result. Fogarty, Hanmar, Whittam, McCallan, Truxess, Laycock, Young, Ray, Simeon and Nick Jeffries. Well, great racing and a marvellous Macau Grand Prix. 1992 is over. Roll on 1993.